David Banner, physician, scientist, searching for a way to tap into the hidden strengths that all humans have. Then an accidental overdose of gamma radiation alters his body chemistry. Welcome back, everyone. Today we are going to do The Incredible Hulk 330 from 1987. This is Todd McFarlane's very first issue on Hulk. It is not written by Peter David. It is actually written by Al Milgram. Peter David would start, I believe, the next issue of Hulk, and then him and McFarlane would have a run, a short run on the title. Um... McFarlane does the cover, and you can see some things. He doesn't ink this issue. Um, so there's his signature. It's not his iconic signature that we're used to. It was He was more of a classic comic book illustrator during this time. So um, I have to be honest, I have this issue. I don't think I've ever read it. I think I just have it because it's Tom McFarlane. Um, this is toward, um, Al Milgram had, uh, had some issues in between when John Byrne left to go to DC Comics and Peter David took over as writer. And this is Al Milgram's very last, um, writer or very last, uh, story. Peter David actually, I believe, had the issue prior to this as a one. So this is Rick Jones as the Hulk. Um, or as a Hulk. Um, you can see here Al Milgram inks this issue. Al Milgram is a heavy uh, brush inker. And I do like, I do love heavy, heavy inks. I don't like it on Todd McFarlane because I've, the years and years, it's not his style. But I love me thick inks. So um, you can just see some McFarlaneisms, kind of as he's as he is, and see. Even though Milgram is uh, inking him, you can still see some McFarlaneisms um, while he grows into this. So. Like I said, I, I'm not quite familiar with this story. I have this issue. I have every issue that I cover. But I don't think I've ever read it. Um, I think I just opened it up and looked at the and looked because it was McFarlane. I bought it later in McFarlane's appearance. I was a huge fan of his later Hulk work. So um, this is a um, this is different for sure. This is uh, Bruce Banner hanging out to Rick Jones. So, um, this is the Gamma base, I believe, because Peter David does continue to use this. And uh, McFarlane, you can see here that the cheekbones and the brow are kind of starting. Um, and we'll see in later on issues that McFarlane really um, grows into that brow. I've already covered, uh, I believe it was Wolver uh, uh, Hulk 340 with Wolverine, um, so which was McFarlane's first inking job on the Hulk. So this is uh, Betty Banner, um, Hulk's wife. And this is Thunderbolt Ross, who eventually does become the Red Hulk. He dies, but it's comic books. Nobody ever dies, so... Um, so, anyway, like I said, this is Al Milgram's last issue of Hulk, and, uh, McFarlaneisms are here. The way he does his hands, he still does the hands this way now. His, the details, it's different, but, um, we can see through the thick panels here. Also, the layout is different. It's more comic book layout. We all know McFarlane has uh, these insane layouts um, that he will um, lean into. Like I said, this is Thunderbolt Ross, the future Red Hulk. Um, of course, Red Hulk is until about 25 years later. So a lot of happens between here and there. So... Peter David does a great run with the Hulk, um, 
but it hasn't even started yet. So, like I said, this is toward... Hulk wasn't selling very much uh, during this time. It was actually on the verge of cancellation. And then Peter David with McFarlane really saved it. So, I guess this guy has some kind of powers. Like I said, I have never read this. I um, wouldn't even be able to tell you what the heck is going on here. Looks like this creature is goes from person to person. So, all right, we're just kind of looking at this McFarlane, uh, Todd McFarlane art, and particularly his first issue. Like I said, he did not ink this himself. I do like the inks of Al Milgram. I love that heavy brush. It just doesn't look good on Todd. Um, so apparently, this creature takes over. This is uh, Dr. Samson. So, McFarlane is so... <laughs> you can just see the nose. He's very cartoony. Um, and that he still is, regardless of how little McFarlaneism details. So... If this this type of inking goes is very Klaus Janssen type, it looks great on on uh, artists like Frank Miller, even Walter Simonson. Um, just that heavy brush, like I said, just does not look good on on uh, Todd. But this is all very McFarlaneism. All these things. He is just in there. It's amazing how how little has changed and how much has changed at the same time. The posing um, is in there. The close-ups. So I think he only turned into Hulk at sundown, just like the Grey Hulk. So. I don't know why, um, I don't even remember why Rick Jones, how Rick Jones became the Hulk. I've really never read those issues, but I, like I said, I have this because of McFarlane. I, I have his entire run on Hulk, his entire run on Spider-Man, his entire run on Amazing Spider-Man, um, his Batman Year 2, I have The Invasion, I have... All the issues that he drew for Spawn, and all the issues that he has that he um, the covers for, and so this creature looks like he took over Bruce Banner. I don't know. I honestly don't know if this is just a once and and Peter David takes over, just kind of finishes the story. So, but this is, uh, I think this is where uh, he dies. Like I said, don't cry because he ends up coming back because this is comic books and everyone comes back. He, like I said, he eventually becomes the Red Hulk. So, And we end with a kind of nice looking panel. Um, so, with uh, uh, you can just see everyone. This is a very well composed panel, even though there's not a lot of action in it. It's uh, pretty well done. So, McFarlane is definitely going to, you know, you can just tell that Superstars is, is starting to come out or. You know, so anyway, so hope you enjoyed it. Um, Today we're going to be looking at the first Todd McFarlane, Peter David uh, from the early run of Incredible Hulk. We're going to, I've already done all of, uh, I shouldn't say all. I've done most of McFarlane's run on Amazing Spider-Man all his run on Spider-Man. And I decided, hey, it'd be kind of fun to kind of 
look at what he was doing before he did Spider-Man. I do eventually plan on doing his entire, uh, finish his entire run on Amazing Spider-Man, doing, um, on the playlist, uh, issues 314 through 328 by McFarlane are there. I do eventually plan on doing 298 through 313. So those are not there yet. But um, I decided, you know what? Um, we've all seen plenty of Todd McFarlane on Spider-Man, but not enough on Hulk. So this is when he was starting to come. He does not do this cover, I believe. Um, uh, I believe Steve Geiger is the penciler. And uh, I think uh, Jim Sanders, who is, and the I believe he's the inker inside, do the cover. So this is before McFarlane sort of becomes Todd McFarlane, okay? So you're going to see uh, some of his tropes are in there. And here is Peter Davids. This is his first issue as the permanent writer. So Peter David had written... Not, um, not the previous issue. Um, uh, he he didn't write three thirty, but he wrote three twenty nine, and then um, so he's finishing up the the story that was originally done. So if you've seen some of McFarland's Hulk, um, it takes a while before we get there. Okay, and. This is just his pencils as somebody else is inking. Uh, I missed, sorry, I missed the credits. Kim DeMulder is the inker. So it kind of does pick up. So Rick Jones, who is the Hulk, by the way, this is Rick Jones. Um, he has escaped the Gamma Base. Um, so the Hulkbusters, um, who is this group of people that were put together to um, go after the Hulk... Um, they begin to mobilize to chase the Rick Jones Hulk. So, what we have here now is Bruce Banner is going to offer to expose himself to the Gamma Rays and become the Hulk again so that he can capture Rick. But, of course, Becky is just shocked that he would even suggest such a crazy things and Bruce quickly does agree with her and um, does does agree that it is a bad idea so um, again here we have the Hulkbusters here and they uh, turn their attention to the body of Thaddeus Ross um, he is of course Betty's Betty's father um, and General Ross had sacrificed his life, his uh, life to stop the Nevermind, who was the villain or the the main uh, bad guy in the previous issue. So Clay Quartermain, who is this uh, the blonde guy here, he is thinking that you know he better call the local morgue in order to deal with the bar body because he fears reprisal from Shield. He is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, uh, so Clay's going to send off the Hulkbusters to hunt down the new Hulk. But Armand, um, who is uh, uh, this guy right here, um, is disturbed with uh, Lara Kett, who is uh, this guy right here. He's obsessed with um, just trying to get the Hulk just destroyed. So... So now we get Quartermain, who's calling the local morgue, and they agree to pick up the body from Gamma Base, and the man in charge here tells him to bring their new employee, Stearns. So Stearns, who we can see here, is actually the leader um, who is uh, trapped in human, in sort of a human form um the driver is a little because Stearns is acts strangely with is because again he is the leader so 
So the Hulkbusters, they're searching for Rick Jones. But here's the thing. They don't know that Rick Jones is the Hulk at this time. So, um, but they will soon. Um, but we know as, as readers that it is Rick Jones who, who is the Hulk. And here uh, in, in, um, at the monitor area, Bruce, who's right here, and Betty, who's right here, are sort of um, arguing, or you know, he's being pressed. He Betty wants him to take some time off from Hulk hunting so they can have some time alone. Um, Bruce again brings up the idea of willing transforming himself into the Hulk, and Betty is just shocked when she learns that Bruce has done this to himself in the past. You know, Betty's upset to hear that the man that claims that you know his life at the as the hulk was such a nightmare would willingly inflict the transformation upon himself you know regardless of the circumstances um the hulk busters kind of radio in as they continue to argue they're still you know they're saying they haven't found anything but suddenly of course they do find the hulk and he's taken hideko's uh ship um this is a very cool cool panel here um notice if like i said the the things aren't there yet the nose the the brow but you know they'll come so they're engaging the hulk basically um and she needs to um get uh the hulk off her um and uh, he's going to destroy the, the ship. And uh, Banner is yelling for Rick to um, to let go. And not to let the Hulk win. And asking her to let her go. And this uh, right here. Um, I don't know who, who this is. If this is... Uh, I, if this is Laroque or whatever. But... Um, they're going to try to see if they can, uh, um, it goes into do some fancy flying and they're going to go through this, uh, uh, thing here and hit them or through that, uh, cliff. So they let go and now they're going to shoot. So, um, you know, at, at, during this time, um, they had created the Hulkbusters to destroy the mindless Hulk. There was a time the Bruce Banner and the Hulk had been split. And the Hulk was mindless. But, you know, this is different now. And John Byrne was the creator in charge during that short run. Um, after he had left Alpha Flight. So, And uh, Betty is... Uh, as... Uh, Stearns and uh, the the assistant have come to take away the body. You can see how distraught she is. So when Bruce tries to console Betty, she angrily tells him to stay away from her. You know, she he had promised a better life, but of course, um, they're not. You know, her, his assurances are met with skepticism. Um, he decides, you know, I started, the, I started this and I'll finish it. Bumps into Stern's accidentally, and Stern sees the Hulk in there, and uh, he thinks this will give him the power that he needs. He's trying to become the leader again. Um, he's told by his coworker to get moving, um, so he complies, and. Uh, they load uh, General Ross in there, and you, you you see this little wrench. And, of course, don't show something unless you're going to use it. So we know that uh, um, something's come up. Um, he, This guy's like, oh, I'm going to be retiring soon, and I don't have to deal with any of this. And he notices that they're going a different way. Um, real quick, you can really see McFarlane, the penciler, just becoming really 
you know, into himself. The the way the panels are composed, not quite yet, but you know, it's all in there. Once he starts inking himself, things things get really really good. So, anyway, so, um, he's admonishing, um the leader what she doesn't know is the leader and he's like whatever you say and then suddenly bam 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 so because these are comic books we don't know you know we're not showing if he kills the guy or just knocked him out to sleep but we can probably assume that he's uh probably not doing well here uh, it would have been nice to see like a little bit of blood so he just says hey go back in the back and be quiet or I'll get rough so we we will assume he's still alive but you never know during this time you know kids still read comic books and, and a lot still do so it, this is always all like PG so so a quick disclaimer and I should have just said this at the front I own all these issues every issue that I'm showing you even though I'm showing them to you digitally I actually own them I actually have two copies of this issue I have a good copy and I actually have some readers copies which are pretty beat up because I really read this so much I just I love 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 Todd McFarlane and um, I just I did what a lot of high school kids do so I also have the John Byrne run which um, was not uh, which was about two years before this so so this guy here is a John Byrne creation, and he is looking for Betty. His name is Ramon. His name is actually Ramon Morales, I believe, and he is her husband. So um, he's uh, looking for them, and uh, they, you know, this guy says, "Oh, she's at the base. I saw her in the news, and uh, she had apparently married some other guy." So, which of course, then he's like, "Nope." <laughs> I'm her husband, so we'll see here what what uh, what ends up happening. So, um, back in the desert. So this was this is in New Mexico, and um, you know he is the Hulkbusters and the Hulk are basically going at it, and the Hulk jumps up and rips his uh, rips his hand through the ship, grabbing him in the a uh, in the ankle. And basically crushes it and um, you know they we just gonna have a pretty standard uh, Hulk fight coming up here so they know he's Rick Jones so they don't want to kill him or at least this this uh, person one of them doesn't want to kill him uh, there's just too many people I, I keep forgetting who everybody is so you'll you'll uh, um, forgive me here but i think armand is the one that uh you know sends this net electrified net but the hulk quickly whips the net back into sender ship and um basically is free from it and then uh, punches the ship so he needs to eject and he does but unfortunately he jet it's too low so he um lands very hard probably broke his leg but at least he did not die and so the the rick jones hulk is essentially um just destroyed them so um you know, the hulk basically leaps away and they convince you know Larkett wants to go after him but um they convince not to keep pursuing um Rick so at this moment they uh they stop so um Bruce had like another secret base and he drives up to it and he is convince himself that he needs to become the Hulk in order to bring in Rick Jones. So he uses the gamma projector to become the Hulk once again. Now this is the Gray Hulk as he had been um the Gray Hulk prior. Um 
but this is the return of of the of the Grey Hulk essentially, and uh, he had been tricked essentially by the Grey Hulk. He had inf- the Grey Hulk had influenced him and used that influence to turn him that convinced him that he needed to to be the Hulk. So, um. I can't imagine how great this panel would have been if McFarlane would have drawn it the way he draws the Hulk now with the big brow. But you can still see, you know, it's a, it, it it's coming. So the transformation, uh, you you will see McFarlane's Hulk just really, really, really um, change um, how he draws him. So. And he doesn't want the process to be undone. So the Hulk destroys that device to make sure he never turns back. And of course, Stearns is so upset because this is what would have um, turned him back into the leader. Um, And when the Hulk grabs him, he does tell him that it is him. And he tells him that um, if he can help him restore his lost powers and he will help him restore and he will assist in uh, Rick Jones returning back to human. So um, this concludes the issue. I I just have to tell also people, I really do like Peter David. Um, He is in my top 10 of favorite writers. He, he does, he, he, was in the Hulk for a long time. So he really, but this is his first issue and you can already, you know, he settled in already and just immediately and just turned everything into himself. So he finishes up this, this story, which is not his, he's finishing up somebody else's story, but then he's going to start, you know, uh, making all those really cool things. I, um, I don't know how, if we'll be able to cover every issue, of Peter David's run. It was a long run, but uh, we'll certainly give it a try. So um, like and subscribe and thanks for listening.